The challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! <laughs> Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Red Manson had been an outlaw leader in Texas, back in the States. When the law broke up his gang, he escaped to San Francisco. There, he heard about the gold strike in the Yukon Territory. Red took passage to Dawson City, hoping to accumulate riches in a hurry. But when he arrived there and discovered that to find gold, he'd have to put in hours of hard work, Red decided against it. He drifted southward to Selkirk. There he met others hoping to find easy money. He met with four such men in his room at the Selkirk Hotel one night. Red did most of the talking. Fellas, there's plenty of gold and cash to be had up here just for the taking. There's no use breaking your back digging for it to my way of thinking. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you're Red. When I was in the Southwest Territory down the state, I had a gang. We made plenty. Well, if you made so much, Red, why did you come up here to the Yukon yeah, Territory? Why? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. Why'd you give up your gang down in the States? Oh, don't be a couple of dopes. The gang was broken up by a sheriff and a posse. I escaped. I headed for Frisco. I didn't dare go back into the Southwest Territory because they put a price on my head. Yeah, what happened to all the cash you collected when you had the gang? Some of it I managed to take with me. But most of it was taken by the posse when they made the raid on our hideout. Lucky for me, I'd left camp and gone to a nearby town. I was coming back when I heard the shooting. You sure were lucky, Red. Yeah, yeah, but I wasn't lucky in Frisco. Lost a lot of my cash there. Couldn't make the right connection to get another gang going. Well, anyway, I heard the talk about the big gold rush up this way, and I decided that this was where I'd make a fresh start. Took what cash I had left and... Bought a passage to Dawson. I suppose you thought you'd find gold lying in the streets, huh, Red? <laughs> That's about the way I figured it'd be. Yeah, when I got to Dawson, I had to look around to find a street all night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I got here, men were camping right in Main Street of Dawson City in tents. <laughs> Man alive, what a mess. Well, anyway, that pick and shovel way of trying to get gold isn't in my line. No, mine no, neither. Yeah, That's the way I feel. No. Well, then, like I said before... Cash and gold is to be had just for the taking. If we get together and take it. Look, I'm going to form a new gang. If you want to be part of it, all right. I was fair and square with my old gang. We split everything we got equally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mean if we work for you as a gang, you'll plan jobs and give us the same as you get? That's right. But you got to do just as I tell you, or we'll forget the whole thing. Yeah. That's all right with me, Red. Yeah, Red. Count me in, too. Good. What about you other two men? I'll no, go along I'm with you, Red. Yeah. And it's settled. Now listen. I staked a claim up on Otter Creek just as a blind. There's a deserted cabin that some trapper had up there on the claim. We'll fix it up and use it for a meeting place in the hideout. That is, if it's all right with the rest of you. Yeah, it sounds good. 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 And meet me there tomorrow. Now don't leave town together. We'll plan some jobs. Then next week we'll start getting some of that loose gold and cash. After Red and his gang were settled in the cabin on Otter Creek, a series of robberies were carried out in the territory around Selkirk. The first was a holdup one night at the express office. Good evening, ma'am. What is it you'd Mr. like? Hold up, mister. Why? And this gun will go off if you make one false move. Now get over there and open that safe. You'll soon find yourselves behind bars for this. The Mounties Shut will be... Shut up and get moving. No, I... I'll open it. All right, get those bags ready. All right. There. It's open. Good. And this will keep you from getting the Mounties after us right away. No! All right, Dave. You and Sam clean out the safe. Make it quick. Right. Let's get busy, Sam. Come on, Dave. Some more there. 
Here, I think we have everything. Now, let's clear out of here. Following that robbery, two prospectors were stopped and robbed along the main trail. Ed, we have about $5,000 worth of gold in that saddlebag. <laughs> We've been my lucky this spring. Yep. If this keeps up, we'll make plenty before winter closes in again. I... They look coming down the trail there. Five horsemen with hats pulled down, wearing bandana cross face, jumping catfish head. The outlaws. Use your gun. All right. Oh my shoulder! Whoa! Oh, hold there! Oh! 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 Pulling that gun was a bad idea, Mister. Get off your horses, both of you. Yep. Steady now. Steady. Dave, go through that saddlebag while Sam searches their pockets. Right. Easy now. We better hurry, too. <laughs> Come on. Stand still. Found some folks are going to the saddlebags. Let me see. They... Yeah, they haven't got anything in their pockets. All right, hit the leather. Let's get away from here. Right. Here. Steady now. We'll take the horses with us. Let's go. Get up. Get, get up. Get up. The Manson gang's most recent crime was the most daring and caused much more excitement than the other two. Dave and Sam boarded the boat, the Yukon Bell, at a point not far from Selkirk. The boat docked at the Selkirk Wharf about sundown. Red and the other two men waited in the shadows on the dock with the horses nearby. After the crowd had left the boat, Dave signaled to Red and his two companions, who, carrying carpet bags, went up the gangplank. No one questioned them, and a few minutes later, they stood talking to Dave and Sam in the deserted main lounge of the boat. What's the layout, Dave? Well, the captain and first mate went to the cabin. Purser and second mate are in the purser's office, putting new paper money into a bag to take to the bank. Sam, you stand guard outside the captain's cabin. The rest of us will go get that dough. Come on. Cautiously, they made their way to the purser's office. Then, Red flung open the unlocked door suddenly. Reach, both of you. What? It's a holdup. They'll not get this cash. No! You, you shot him. Yeah, and we'll shoot you too if you try anything. Well, I see the cash is all in that black bag, huh? I'll take it. I don't need this carpet bag. All right, boys, I got the cash. Let's tie the purser and gag him. We lock the door on the way out and take the key. I'll tie him. Are you... <laughs> no, you won't. Everybody will think that purser and mate went ashore for a while. <laughs> We'll have time for a getaway. You'll not get away with this. I think you killed the mate. You'll be hunted for murder. Shut up. Gag him, Dave. Right. Now he's all set. Good. Now let's go. Saunter down the gangplank one or two at a time. Come on. It was several hours later when the constable was called to the boat. He stood in the purser's office with the captain, a man from the bank, and the purser. The constable was questioning the purser. How long was it before the crime was discovered and you were released? Well, Constable, the men came in here at sundown. I was bound and gagged and left in here with a dead mate until the captain came back to the boat and was asked about the money shipment by this man from the bank. Yes, yes sir. Then the uh, captain didn't know that you hadn't left the boat with the money ship. Is that it? That's right, Constable. The captain and the crew went ashore just after we docked. He knew nothing about what had happened until he found the man from the bank waiting here to find out about the money. That, that, that's right. We expected the shipment to be delivered to us at the bank, and the cashier and I stayed there to receive it. Uh -huh. When it didn't arrive after a reasonable length of time, I came here to the boat. I see. I waited for the captain to return. Finally, when he did come back, he said the money was supposed to have been delivered right after the boat docked. And then the captain looked for me, and... Finding neither the mate nor me, he decided to force the locked door into this office. That's, That's what right. happened, all right. And when we got inside, we found the purser bound and gagged and the mate dead. That's right. Did you get a good look at the crook's purser? Uh, no, constable. There were several men. They covered their faces with bandanas and had their hats pulled down. Uh-huh. They've had several hours then to make a getaway. Since the robbery and killing occurred about sundown. That's about yes, it, sure Captain. Yes. Uh, yes, Constable. I'll have to request that you delay your sailing for at least 24 hours until I have a chance to question the crew and any others who might be able to throw some light on the crime. Yes. You'll come with me now. We'll question some of the men who've already come aboard. The rest will be questioned in the morning. The following afternoon, Sergeant Preston arrived in Selkirk and drew rein in front of the constable's office. Oh, buggy. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. Hey. 
<laughs> Come along, King. Sergeant Preston, I'm sure glad to see you. Hello, Constable. And King. Glad to see you too, fella. I didn't expect you down this way, Sergeant. That is, not so soon. I, I knew you were on patrol duty. There wasn't anything to keep me elsewhere, Constable. Take it I've been making good time. That's a piece of luck for me, Sergeant. Sit down, won't you? Oh, thanks. You look worried. Anything wrong? Plenty. Three robberies within a week. The last one at sundown yesterday. A man was murdered during the last robbery. Oh, that's bad news. Seems to be a gang at work. So far, I haven't been able to get a line on them at all. Tell me about the robberies. Briefly, the constable told all that he knew about the crimes. When he finished talking about the boat robbery and murder, Preston asked... How long before the purser and the mate were found, Constable? Several hours. The captain and crew went ashore. When the captain returned to the boat, a man from the bank was waiting to ask about the money shipment. I see. Naturally, the captain became suspicious and looked for the purser. Well, finally they broke into the locked office and found him, along with the murdered mate. The purser said there were several men who did it. No lead to the crooks? None. So many people ride and walk near the docks that it was impossible. Well, what about the other two robberies? Did you manage to pick up a trail? Yes, but their tracks separated and led into town. I lost the trails there. No telling where they went to hide out. You think, then, that the boat robbery was done by the men responsible for the other two? Yes, I do. The general description of the men fits with those given by the prospectors and by the express clerk. Of course, the descriptions were vague since the crooks had their hats pulled down and bandanas across their faces in every instance. Occurred to you that some of the crew might have been in on it? Yes. When I investigated, I found the crew, all of them, had checked out to go ashore. I spent the morning questioning them and found every man had a good alibi for the time during which the robbery took place. Frankly, Sergeant, I'm satisfied that the same gang committed all three crimes. Yes, it looks that way. I notice the boat's still docked here. I requested the captain to delay sailing for 24 hours. He was most cooperative. Good. I want to look over the purser's office. All right. I'll go along with you. By the way, there's one thing every victim noticed. Huh? What was that? The crooks all wore new tan leather gloves. Well, that might lead to something. I'll stop at the general store on the way to the dock and ask Mike a question or two. All right. Let's go. Come King. <laughs> a few minutes later, the two Maltese and Yukon King entered the general store. Well, look who's here. <laughs> Haven't seen you and King around here for some time, Sergeant. King and I have been north on patrol, Mike. Oh. Say, I suppose the constable told you about the murder and robbery on the boat, huh? Uh, yes, I did, Mike. Sergeant King came at just the right time. Mike, do you have some new tan leather gloves in stock? Sure do. Got some mighty fine cowhide gloves that came in last week. They're light on the hands and fine for holding reins. Sold many of them? Uh-huh. Sold about two dozen within two days after they came in. Maybe more. Oh. Well, that broadens the field to 24 men, Constable. Yes. I'll have to forget about the gloves. Sure, and just what does that mean, Sergeant? The members of the outlaw gang wore new tan leather gloves, Mike, and they must have bought them here. Oh, great saints. You mean them killers were actually here in my store then? Huh? So that's the way it looks. Oh, glory be. I might have been killed, no less. Sure, and every time I see anyone coming in wearing them gloves... I'll shiver in me boots like as not. Don't worry, Mike. I have an idea the killers are not likely to stay around town this time. They'll know they're wanted for murder. Let's go to the boat now, Constable. See you again, Mike. So long, Mike. Goodbye. Goodbye. Sergeant Preston and the Constable left the store and went to the boat. After interviewing the captain and purser, they went to look over the purser's office. Come right in, sir. Thanks. One king. <laughs> Every time I come in here, I... I get the shakes and said, hold up. I understand how I feel. I suppose people have been coming in and out of here continually since the killing. Well, no one's allowed in here ordinarily. But crew members removed the body of the mate. Some of the other members of the crew came in to look around out of curiosity. I see. The constable told me you'd been gagged. What happened to the handkerchief they used? I have it. It was my own. One of the crooks took it from my pocket. Oh, I was hoping he used his own. What difference would that have made, Sergeant? King could have taken the scent from it. Oh, yes. I forgot about that. Too bad it didn't belong to one of the crooks then. Without something personal, it would carry the scent of one of them. King has nothing to go on. Too many others have confused the scents they left. What's our next move, Sergeant? We'll go back to the office. Try to figure something out. 
Oh, incidentally, Purser, if you think of anything unusual about those men, let us know right away. Of course, sir. I can't forget that they killed the first mate and got away with $20,000 in new bills that I was responsible for. We'll do everything in our power to find them and get that money back. They'll hang for killing the mate. Let's go, Constable. All right. Come on, boy. Let's go. <laughs> that afternoon in the cabin on Otter Creek, Red, Dave, and the two other outlaws waited for Sam, who had gone into town. Yes, when Sam, Sam finally Ryan. returned, they were interested to learn what he'd found out. How are they taking it in town, Sam? I bet we caused a big commotion. Hmm? Yeah, we sure did, Red. By the way, that first mate was killed when you shot him, Red. Killed? Hey, that means we'll be hunted for murder. Yeah, yeah. Dave's right All there. right, what of it? They got no way to connect us with that killing. In the meantime, we got twenty thousand dollars in cash. That's four thousand apiece when we split it. Sure. But I still think you shouldn't have been so hasty with that gun. Listen, you dope. Did you want me to take his bullet? All of you know it was him or me. Sure, but you didn't have to kill him, Red. Well, I did, so what? Stop yapping about what can't be helped. We'll lay low for a while, then we'll head south of Whitehorse and grab some more easy dough. When things quiet down... Well, if you ask me, I think we better head that way now. I saw Sergeant Preston riding into town a while ago. Oh, Holy mackerel! He's one hombre we have reason to worry about. Yeah, I heard sure about do, Preston yeah. when I was in Dawson City. In fact, I saw him a few times there. They say he doesn't give up easy, especially on a murder case. He had a big dog yeah, with him. Does. I've heard plenty about that mutt. Yeah. That dog has a way of picking up a trail even when it's covered with snow. Maybe, but I'm not stupid, Dave. I know that mutt has to have something to go on. He has to be familiar with the scent before he can follow it. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Well, how's he going to pick up our scent out of all the others on the boat? Tell me that. Uh, You've got something yeah, there. They'll never oh, figure that. Lots of people walk the docks and plenty ride around town on horseback. I say stop worrying. Forget the money and the dog. We got enough grub for a week here. By that time, Preston will be gone. Yeah, yeah, I'll make some coffee and then we'll start a, card, a game of cards. That's a good idea, Red. After they returned to the constable's office, Sergeant Preston and the constable talked over the situation. Sergeant, it looks to me as if we're stumped. Those killers have made a clean getaway. I admit we have nothing to go on right now, Constable, but I'll not admit that they haven't made a slip somewhere. Crooks always do. And that's why, sooner or later, the law catches up with them. But that gang seems to have a very clever leader. I don't believe there's any such a thing as a really clever crook, Constable. If a man's clever enough, he's able to get along much better going straight. Well, I wish I could see some hope of catching that gang. Oh, here's the purser from the boat. Sergeant, and I brought this carpet bag over. I found it under the desk in my office on the boat. I noticed it in your office. Isn't it yours, Percy? No, sir. The crook who shot the mate tossed it under my desk when he picked up the money bag. I noticed, too, the others were carrying carpet bags, too. Oh, must have carried them when they came aboard to avoid suspicion. Constable, <laughs> maybe this is the slip the crooks usually make. I'll open the bag. I looked inside, sir. The bag's empty. Oh. Something in one of the little side pockets. Here it is. Nothing but an old sock. This old sock may turn into a noose for the man who carried this bag and for his companions. Sergeant, you mean that sock will give you something to go on? Decidedly. King will get the man sent from this. But so many other people have been around that office and boats. In spite of that, King will be able to pick up this man's scent. Let's cut back to the boat. Come on, King. <laughs> Leaving the purser to follow on foot, Sergeant Preston and the constable mounted their horses and rode to the dock. They went aboard the Yukon Bell and entered the purser's office with the key which the purser had given to them. This I must see. King won't let us down, will you, fellow? <laughs> Taking the sock which had been found in Red Manson's carpet bag, Sergeant Preston held it out to the intelligent dog, King, and spoke. Find him, King. Fine, boy. <laughs> King stood a moment, catching the scent, and then he sniffed about the cabin, and finally raised his head to signal his master that he had found it. <laughs> King's picked up the scent. All right, boy, follow the trail. Find him. Come on, constable. If I'm not mistaken, another crook's going to find out that crime does not pay. The two Mounties followed King down the gangplank and into the shadows of a nearby shed where Red and the others had left their horses. Hoof marks. Here's where they mounted and headed back into town. Yes, but will King be able to follow the scent through town? Many have ridden the streets since. It's been proven that a well-trained dog with a keen sense of smell is able to pick up the scent even under those circumstances, Constable. We'll get our horses and come back here, and then we'll get on the trail of that gang. Wait here, King. <laughs> As the two Mounties followed King through town, their progress was slow because of the maze of scents from which the dog had to pick up the one he was trailing. Finally, at the edge of town, King stopped and barked excitedly. 
Good luck, Eve. Good luck, well, Constable, the king's trying to tell us the scent is stronger here. But I see the hoof marks of only one horse. I know. The cook's probably scattered and left town separately. I'm sure this trail will lead us to the others. All right, King, find him. Get going, boy. Get up, Blackie. Get up. For a while, King led the two Mounties along the main north trail. And then he followed a trail which branched off to the left. As they rode, Preston said, This branch trail goes along Otter Creek. Know anyone prospecting up this way, Constable? No, I don't, Sergeant. As a matter of fact, I thought the few claims up here had been abandoned long ago. Oh, that makes sense. The cooks could use one of those abandoned cabins as a hideout. That's right. We'll have to move carefully. From what we've learned, there are four or five in that gang and they're killers. We're going against big odds, Sergeant. Two against five. Three against five, Constable. Don't forget King. If we're able to catch them by surprise, we ought to be able to handle things. I'm willing to try, since you are. Good. When we sight the first cabin, we'll stop. Get up, Blackie. Get up, come on now. Before long, King left the branch trail and turned along a path which went over a low hill. Preston called the dog as the two Mounties halted. Oh, Blackie, who? Oh. King, come here, boy. <laughs> Constable, if I remember correctly, there's a deserted trapper's cabin on the other side of that hill near the creek. That's right, there is, Sergeant. That may be where the crooks are hiding out. Yes, that's what I think. The pines and the brush grow quite close to that cabin from the sides and back, unless somebody's cleared the land since I saw it. It's still the same. I stopped there when I made my rounds this spring. That's a break for us. We'll leave our horses ground hitched right here. Steady. Steady. Nail what? We'll circle around and come up to the cabin through the woods on either side. I'll take King with me. Uh, seems to me there's only one window to that cabin. That's right, there is. It's on the left side. That's the side, King, and I'll cover then. Let's go and be careful. I'll be careful. Come along, King. Be quiet, boy. <laughs> Cautiously, the two Mounties approached the cabin from either side. Sergeant Preston and King made their way unnoticed to the cabin where the Mountie crouched under the window with drawn gun. One of the small squares of glass was missing, and he was able to hear the crooks talking inside. Sergeant Preston waited, listening intently. Your place, Sam. Uh, it looks like you got me, Red. There's my hand. <laughs> ah, ah. Red beat you that time, Sam. Yeah, I'm one hand you. Yeah. I'm sick of playing anyway. I keep yeah. thinking of that Monty and his dog I saw come to town. Oh, don't start beefing about that again. I've heard enough about him. I'm tired of telling you. There's nothing to worry about. I can't help it, Red. If you hadn't killed that mate, it wouldn't be so bad. Ah, oh, right. shut up. Me and the others want to play another round. All right, All right. it's my deal. Come on, yeah. Pete. Feel them out. Let's yeah. get started. Deal, Red. Sergeant Preston, with King at his side, moved around behind the cabin and beckoned to the constable who was on the other side waiting. We've found them, constable. I heard them discussing the murder of the mate. Think we'll have a chance if we rush them? I'll have a better chance if there aren't so many in there. Their horses are probably in that shed back there. Well, they are. I heard them stomping a minute ago. Let's go back there. We'll stand just inside the shed door and have King worry the horses by growling at them. May bring one or two of the men out here. Let's try it. Come on. The door to the shed stood open. The two Mounties took their places just inside the doorway on either side. And then Preston spoke low to King. Growl, King. Growl at the horses. Inside the cabin, Red was about to deal the cards when he stopped and listened. Hey, something's bothering the horses out in the shed. They're setting up a rumpus. Yeah, I hear it. Sam, you're not playing this round. Go on out, see what's bothering them. Better take your gun along. Might be a bear or something. Yeah, all right, Red. It'll give me something to do. Yeah, all right. Go ahead, Peter. With gun in hand, the outlaw Sam walked back toward the shed. As he approached the open doorway, he stopped a moment, listening. Hey, doggone horses get jittery at nothing at all. Easy there, easy now. Easy is right. <laughs> There's one accounted for, Constable. I'll tie him and get him out of sight, and we'll see if someone comes looking for him. Let's get busy. Right. Ten minutes passed while the outlaws in the cabin gave their attention to the card game. And then Dave suddenly asked. Hey, where's Sam? I wonder what's keeping him. Yeah, everything seems to be quiet out back now. Yeah, it does. Uh, all right. Red, I, I was thinking... Uh, thinking what? Well, Sam's been worrying a lot this afternoon. You think he grabbed his horse and let out without letting us know? Say... Maybe he did it that. Yeah, he'd just like him. Ah, he wouldn't be that big a fool. He's got $4,000 coming to him from that bank money. Why don't you go out and see where he is, Dave? I'll go. I don't want to play this time anyway. In the shed, Preston and the constable waited patiently. Finally, they heard footsteps approaching outside. Hey, Sam, where are you? 
Quickly, Sergeant Preston held his hand over his mouth, and in a changed, muffled voice answered, In here! Hook! What's happened, Sam? Did one of the horses kick you? Sam! Quiet, you! Oh! Two down, Constable. Well, that's enough of this game. When two don't come back, the others will suspect something. Let's tie him and gag him as we did Sam, and we'll surprise the other three. Right, Sergeant. It took only a few minutes to tie and gag the second outlaw. And then the two Mounties and King headed for the cabin. Inside, Red and the other two stopped playing as Red said, Now, where's Fred? He and Sam ought to be back here. <laughs> oh, let's all go out and see what's going on. Right, Hold on. it! Hey, Wait, Sean, look, hey, look, Preston! The constable's behind him! As the three outlaws went for their guns, <laughs> Sergeant Preston and the constable fired simultaneously. <laughs> The third outlaw, Lou, was momentarily prevented from shooting when Red reeled and fell in front of him. Hey, look out! Lou, seeing his two companions were wounded, dropped his gun. Wait, don't shoot. I dropped my gun. Well, we got them all, Sergeant. That's right, Constable. We'll fix their wounds before we take them back to town. I'll get this shirt off. Take it, Jeff. Take it easy. As Sergeant Preston holstered his gun and prepared to attend to the wounded outlaw, Dave, the great dog, Yukon King, saw Red, who had fallen to the floor with a leg wound, slyly pick up his gun. The outlaw leader leaned on his elbow and, without being noticed, raised his gun to aim at Preston. At that instant, the intelligent dog went into action. King sprang forward, grabbing Red's gun arm. Oh, dog! Get him! Take him off! Take him off! Okay, come on, boy. Good for you, fella. That was close. Well, Constable, this time we have them all. All right, you men. They're all under arrest in the name of the Crown for murder. Oh, no. Red's the one who killed the mate. I never killed anyone. You'll all hang. We'll bind your wounds and get you to jail as soon as possible. Your third strike, robbing the boat, will be your last. This case is closed. <laughs> In our next adventure, Sergeant Preston is speaking to Inspector Conrad in the latter's office at Mounted Police Headquarters. It's an almost unbelievable story, Inspector. You see, there's a valley high in the mountains where a hundred men are being held prisoner. Held prisoner by an outlaw gang and forced to mine gold, to work or be starved or beaten to death. I agree. It seems unbelievable. The man who just died in the hospital, sir, swears it's true. And you want to find the valley, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Then what? Well, sir, the next step would seem to be to arrest the outlaws and free the men. But how can the sergeant and king accomplish such a task? A man and a dog alone, facing a band of desperate outlaws, high in the mountains, far from any help. Can they even hope to reach the mysterious valley where a hundred men are being held as slaves. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. The Challenge of the Yukon is brought to you every Saturday and Sunday. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until our next adventure. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.